Hey guys, this is Dan from BodybuilderInThailand.com. Wanted to talk to you guys today about the details of some of my surgeries that I had on my leg uh, to get to the state where it's at now. And um, also let you guys know that I am stateside. So I know some of you have been wondering, I'm in the United States. Uh, so the first thing that I had was um, I had this, this spot of uh, skin that wouldn't heal and it wouldn't heal for like two months and I kept taking antibiotics but they wouldn't do anything right and so I finally went to the hospital and uh, immediately you know, they said, you know, there's necrotic flesh here. Um, you're in critical condition, although you may not know it because of uh, risk of sepsis, which is when you uh, have an infection that gets into your blood. And when that happens, you can die like super quick, like within days after acquiring that. And so they were really alarmed when they saw the original like circular uh, necrotic spot on my leg, which was like about three inches in diameter. It was just a circular area where everything had died and for two months, no skin would grow there. It was like kind of like a, a weak scab over the muscle that looked like, it, the scab was kind of like made out of pus, which is really gross. Um, so yeah, then they, you know, I thought, okay, well, you know, maybe I'm going to have to get like a methicillin resistant antibiotic injection when I was in the hospital, right? Cause they admitted me to the hospital and it was a private hospital that I went to. So originally I went to a doctor in, in Columbia, um, the day before I went to the hospital and I said to the doctor, uh, I showed my leg to them and I said, uh, you, you know, I asked them if they could treat me. And this was like at a smaller clinic. It wasn't like at a large hospital. It was at a smaller like doctor clinic where maybe like six or seven different doctors all shared a building. Um, and they looked at my leg and said, it was bad. They can't treat it. It's too severe for them to treat. And then they recommended me that hospital that I ended up going to, which was a, a private hospital in Colombia, and um, it was a good hospital. It was called Pablo Toban Uribe Hospital. And uh, yeah, they have really good doctors there. So that's the hospital they ended up at. And when I was, uh, so I, I was at the hospital, and so once they're looking at it, the doctors are looking at it, and they're saying the same thing, this is bad, right? But I'm still thinking like, I'm gonna get a methicillin methicillin resistant um, antibiotic injection and I'll be out of here in like a maximum of two days is what I was thinking. But then um, some surgeons and specialists came in to look at me because the original like doctor on the floor uh, in the emergency room was like freaked out by my leg which was obviously disturbing to me how freaked out they were by it and how serious they thought it was because I was still in this uh, mental headspace so I usually try to take th care of things myself you know like as far as like medical things go or just anything really I try to take care of it by myself and then if like I absolutely cannot and like uh, I cannot control uh, my situations or whatever then I reach out for help which is you know why I ended up going to the doctor and because um, I could not control this thing that was happening to my leg and um, so the surgeons come out these specialists come, come out and they tell me you know you need surgery and you need surgery now and uh, there's necrotic flesh which I didn't know I thought I just had an infection in my leg uh, and they said you know like you have this thing called uh, necrotizing fasciitis where uh, it's like a, a it basically is a, your cells are contagious with their death to the other cells near them. And so it was spreading. Um, they said, you know, you need surgery immediately. Uh, they did some tests like, uh, like uh, ultrasound and radiation tests 
on uh, on the area and uh, it was like an iceberg you know there was dead tissue spread all throughout my leg under the skin there was the circular area which was like the uh, catalyst but unbeknownst to me the normal skin was under it there was a there was dead shit all under there um, you know around that spot like an iceberg underneath the skin of dying flesh uh, really disgusting and so you know they said I need surgery immediately and then you know I'm like how much you know is it because obviously I'm gonna have to be paying out of pocket because like I said I didn't have health insurance um, and uh, normally like for example in a place like Thailand I, you know, I would pay like for my hernia surgery, I paid out of pocket for that. And, you know, I ended up spending about only a thousand dollars all in on that, um, in Thailand, which, uh, when I had my umbilical hernia in my belly button, but, um, in Colombia, it's more. And anyways, it was just foolish not to have health insurance and think that I could, uh, take care of those things, um, in other countries paying out of pocket. So anyways, the, uh, they came with an estimate for the surgery, for that first surgery, which uh, was around $10,000, which was around the amount of money that I had in my bank account. Um, and I don't use credit cards or anything like that. You know, I just use the money that I have, which is, you know, the money in my bank account. Um, and you don't have credit cards. And they, uh, they, so yeah. They said, you need the surgery, you absolutely have to have the surgery or else, you know, like you're gonna die. Uh, so, you know, I went, okay, I went ahead and had the surgery and um, I woke up from that first surgery, which was where they cut out the necrotizing shit. And um, my leg was in severe pain. They hadn't given me any morphine uh, after the surgery. And uh, so I was like in extreme pain for about an hour with no uh, painkiller in my system after I woke up from that surgery. And also the, my surgery underwent this thing called uh, dehiscence, which is uh, where within about an hour after I got out of that surgery, um, there was so much bleeding and pressure inside the wound that my surgery that the surgeon had just done exploded. And so that's where that really, really disgusting original pictures of my leg where I made the first made the GoFundMe post and the Instagram come from, which was that was when my first surgery exploded, which was like disgusting. Um, and there was so much blood all over the hospital bed. Like I, the blood was it would come out of my leg or it would be in my leg. I could feel my leg bleeding right after the surgery. And then it would like coagulate kind of so it was jelly and then the like a sheet of jelly would fall out of my leg and then a new one would start forming and the entire bed the hospital bed was just soaked in blood it looked like somebody had poured a bucket like a gallon bucket of my blood all over the bed which was totally disgusting anyways they finally stopped the bleeding after like two hours because the surgeon came in and showed them the nurses how to make a new bandage and they gave me morphine so i wasn't in like insane insane pain anymore uh, which was really like a nightmare. I don't even like thinking about that, how much pain I was in, because that was like uh, not cool. Uh, just like a disgusting thought. Uh, surgery without painkiller is, uh, yeah, it's not, not pleasant. Uh, so then, so the surgery exploded, and um, then, you know, I made the, the, that's when I publicly went public of, you know, I have an infection. Um, having a problem I'm here in the hospital that was that point so then I needed um, they said three more surgeries I ended up having two more surgeries after that and so what those were was the first one was to repair and it was very soon it was two days after that first one that was botched surgery the next one was to install a vacuum machine inside my leg that had a pipe connected to it and you guys have probably seen that um, and it was a vacuum that sucked, uh, stuff out of my leg and, and it was installed inside the leg. They did a surgery to put the vacuum into the leg and, uh, that made a massive difference because all that huge swelling and everything, that area that had exploded, it was able to be, um, really, really reduced 
and uh, they basically dried the entire area out. They, all the blood in the area, all any fluid, it all got sucked out through this vacuum. And uh, so that was in there for like two or three days just running constantly. So then I had my last surgery, which is now surgery number three. And because the vacuum had worked so well in reducing everything out, um, uh, reducing the, the volume of the, of the affected area, um, a plastic surgeon came in. Well, well, yeah, so I was operated on the third time by a plastic surgeon to then after the vacuum was finished, uh, to then close the wound and get it to the state it's in now, which is here. You can look at my state of my wound now, which I, the, all the stitches are out now. So it's been, a uh, it's been about a month since the surgery and all the stitches are out. Um, but, uh, yeah, so getting the leg into the condition it's in now, uh, the plastic surgeon basically pulled both sides of the skin on the leg and stretched it as tight as it could go. And then, uh, you know, made a, made a nice border where it's like a relatively straight line now. You know, it's relatively straight line and, uh, you know, pulled this side of the skin and then pulled this flap of the skin together tight. And so it's really tight right here. I can feel a constant pain right here because there's so much pulling, even though, you know, it's been a while since the surgery, but it's so tight. There's no slack in the skin. You see, I can like kind of pinch skin here, but look, there's no skin to pinch here because it's so tight. Uh, so anyways, that's what the plastic surgeon did was he took that mess that total mess that you saw and he turned it into this, which, uh, you know, he really carefully cut all the edges, uh, uh, along the incision, making like, a making a pattern that was, it's like a kind of like a cross or T pattern. And that, uh, so, so he did a bunch of work to make that mess end up looking, you know, like it is now it's relatively coming together. It's looking, you know, like a repaired injury from looking like a total mess. So, and then that was my last surgery. And from there, once that last surgery with a plastic surgeon was, that went better than expected too, because the wound vac uh, surgery went good. And then, um, so that was the last surgery I had. And ever since then I've been healing. And now I am to where I am now recovering stateside and uh so that's the story or the explanation of the three surgeries that i had for my leg dan the bodybuilder in thailand